how's it going? Welcome to LFC Transfer Talk. Now some reports have come out in the world of local football club about a player in which we have been heavily linked to sign somewhere in the goddamn blame future and that is Kamal Adin Solomana, now of Rennes, a player that we have previously been linked with. I want to say the summer 21 transfer window but I could be wrong with that. But he is a phenomenal player and I will set this standard right now. Manchester United signing Jadon Sancho. Good luck with that. Kamal Adin Suleiman is as good as Jadon Sancho when we talk about the hype over at Dortmund. He is that damn good. So if we are able to land his signature in January or even in the summer, Lord of mercy, we will have one hell of a player on our hands because he's a very tricky customer. He's got very good dribbling skills, close ball control. End product is a little bit one of those that, of course, as he gets older, he will be able to work on and fine tune and all that kind of shit. But he has a lot of potential. So, with what reports are claiming that Klopp prefers Kamal Adin Solomana compared to, you know, as opposed to a Jeremy Doku, who is his actual teammate at Rennes. That's an interesting one. It could be potentially his actual agent just working and following the number one rule in the handbook of agency, which is link your mother effing god dabbling client with the move to local football club. So if we are able to genuinely get this individual and it's not a, just a ploy from an agent to try and you know drum up some interest and try and angle a move to like a Real Madrid or a Barcelona or you know because Usumani Dembele has been in the headlines recently whereby there's reports claiming that he's rejected a, a new contract extension from Barcelona even though that kind of contradicts what other reports had claimed before that which is that he is willing to stay at Barcelona and he wants to and he's close to agreeing a new contract extension then you get these which is always you get one side you'll always get the other side that he's not willing to sign and he wants to leave in the summer 22 transfer window. there's a lot of different things so Barcelona could look at him as oh well let's bring him to our club which we know if they can get their finances sorted out, then maybe they will be because we know in January, especially when you look at Kamal Adin Solomana, he will be moving in January, not to the best of my knowledge, unless things drastically change. And if they happen, Barcelona will be out of the conversation because they can only bring in loan deals and he won't be a loan deal. Unless they bring him in as a loan deal with an option to buy. That's a possibility. Who knows? So they could figure it out. But as far as I'm concerned, if Liverpool Football Club, which the only way we could look at this as is a Sergio Mane long-term replacement, but to bring him to Liverpool Football Club, whereby he would be the backup to him, what would that do to his actual development? It, would, it wouldn't actually help him. You know, if you go back to the Shmal Asas, the Jeremy Dokus, when we were linked with either both of those in over the last number of years, it was, oh, they'll be behind Saj Mane, they'll learn. And I'll get that, I understand it. But there is no better way than learning, than actually putting it into practice. You sometimes have to be thrown into the deep end and learn to swim. I mean, there's no other way. Either you'll drown or you'll swim. That's the that's the reality of it. And he's in a sport in which he's already got the 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 footballing skills, and it's a matter of now putting it into practice and then get the coaching. Like when you look at Diego Jard, Diego Jard for me is a prime example of what Klopp has done with him. You look at when Diego Jard joined Liverpool Football Club in the summer 2020. For me, yes, he was getting the goals, but he wasn't playing the exact Liverpool where he was still getting that maybe the uh, Wolves rust off of him in a way because he's more a left winger and he was getting converted which took a lot period, longer period of time last season we know what happened injuries and so forth but you look at it so far this actual season when you look at David Jaw, he's evolving. And I've talked about he's got the attributes of a Jamie Vardy to be a pest on the last line of defence, make the runs in behind and so forth. But you've started to see now Klopp has started to, to combine those attributes with things that he's got, what he can do, with also the Firmino attributes, with being able to open up space, interchanging, exchanging, dropping deeper. But he's got to get that, that sort of aspect of when he drops deeper, not turning on the ball and running every time. He's got to get it through his head of he's dropping deeper as a sacrifice a sacrificial lamb he's sacrificing himself to drop deeper to take defenders away especially when you look at Southampton when they played three at the back in the first half one defender that Lysel fellow was just following him and he was dropping deeper near the halfway line and he was following him so that's where he's got to realize I can pass this off to a target or Fabinho or Henderson, whoever's playing in midfield, who've got the execution to pass that ball straight through in between the actual centre-backs with that huge gap exposed. Or maybe someone else is in that space and that opens up that space in terms of for that player to pick up the ball, turn and, and get behind the actual midfield, attack the actual defence. So when I look at Kamal Adin Sulemana, he is phenomenal. Like going back to the summer 2020, talk of Jadon Sancho potentially come into Liverpool. He wanted to join Liverpool before the pandemic had happened. And obviously it took all year for United to get him. If we get Kamaladin Sulemana, 
honest to God, we would have won hell of a play. I'm not even boasting. I'm not even blagging. I'm not blagging. I know about Kamal Adin Suleiman. I know about this guy. This guy is good. He plays on the left side of the front three. Let me give you his actual stats of transfer market. But he's good. He's fucking good. I'm telling you. And he's better than Jeremy Doc, who's a live wire. But this dude is... This dude's something different. <laughs> anyway, let's get to his stats. So, on transfer market, he's 19 years old. By the way, he's a Pisces as well. Or in his birthday is the month of February, which is the same as mine as well. His is 15. Mine is, what would it be, 5? Well, actually, 3. 13 days more than his. Mine's 28. Uh, he's a 171 meter, 75, which is about 5 foot 9-ish or 5 foot 8. He is also right-footed, but he's actually two-footed. His evaluation, uh, on his valuation, he plays mainly on the left-hand side of the front three. He can also play down the middle and also on the right-hand side of the actual front three. His valuation on transfer market is about 13.5 million, or at least 13.5 million pounds. His contract length is up until 2026. When he left Norseland from the Danish team, there was a whole host of football clubs that were interested in him. There was a whole host, from your Liverpools to your Manchester Uniteds to... Um, Barcelona's and whoever there was loads of clubs interested in him, but he ended up going to Rennes. And has it been a good decision? Some will say yes, some will say no. But with his, according to transfer market, his relatives being his actual agent, then this is interesting. You know how much type of influence would they have on media and you know things of like that nature. So there could possibly be some truth to this, which I don't know. But if we can get our hands on this guy, I'd be so excited. I literally, this would be like the Thiago excitement because this guy's good I've said it so many times this guy's good but I don't know how else explain it this guy's good remember to click on the like button below subscribe to the channel if you're new let's get to the actual report so first report which is by the hard tackle it states in the actual headline Liverpool and interest in Jeremy Doku so there's this um this sort of narrative of Klopp prefers Kamal Adin Sulemana and he's not going to go for Jeremy Doku which to me in my personal opinion if we did not go for Jeremy Doku. Who is it that we're going to go for? If you logically think about it, if let's say, for example, as a local football club fan, you had an option between Usamana Dembele and Jeremy Doku. Now, because of the Sadio Mane, he's a long-term future of Sadio, all that kind of shit, many may say Jeremy Doku. And maybe the warden say Usamana Dembele because of the injuries and so forth. But when you look at his attributes, his ability, he's a freak of nature. He's a freak of nature. With that shadow of that, Usman Dembele is a freak of nature. He just needs the maturity and the consistency in all aspects of footballing, from the fitness levels and the list goes on kind of thing. And then, of course, the end product in the final third. But that comes with playing regularly, staying fit, developing, improving, maturity, etc. This goes on kind of thing. But when I look at Kamal Adin or Sulemana, compared to Usman Dembele, I always go with Kamal Adin Sulemana. That's what I talk about. I'd be like, forget about it. Even when we look at Kingsley Common and we throw that into the mix and I had to pick out of the three, Usman Dembele, Kamal Adin Sulemana and Usman Dembele, I go always with Kamal Adin Sulemana. Always. Every single day of the week. So this report goes on and it says Liverpool are reportedly ready to drop their hunt for Renz winger Jeremy Doku in favour of his teammate Kamal Adin Sulemana. In a recent report from Fichages, has offered an update on Liverpool's pursuit of a couple of Rennes uh, wingers. Jeremy Doku in particular was reportedly one of the club's priority January targets following an excellent Euro 2020 campaign, but it appears that the English Giants are prepared to uh, seed their pursuit in the explosive 19-year-old winger. Liverpool, January targets? 2020? Okay. Formerly the uh, of the pre uh, prestigious Anderlecht Academy, Doku, uh, moved to Rennes last summer. The explosive winger did not require a Mr. Paragraph. Liverpool are ready to move for Doku as they believe that the Rennes teammate, uh, as they believe his Rennes teammate Kamal Adin Solomana may offer more potential. It is an interesting development given the fact that Doku is widely regarded as a potential face of the Belgian attack in the future as the Red Devils look to finally uh, move on from the golden, uh, as the Red Devils move on from his golden uh, generation, formerly of prestigious. Uh, and the academy docker moved from Rennes last summer the explosive winger did not require any time uh, require any time whatsoever preaching as many as uh, 30 league uh, games in his debut campaign in league on although a tally of uh, two goals and three assists were not particularly eye catching the 19 year old turned many heads uh, with his uh, pace and trickery on the flanks it was evident in Doku's performances for Belgium at Euro 2020, prompting interest from Liverpool in the summer. But we've been linked with it multiple times. Many know the story of he visited 
our uh, you know former training facility in Melwood and many believe that he turned us down but the story as I know it which he even though he came out and he had said that he had turned us down afterwards this was like a few months ago I completely disagree because at the time when he had turned us down he well he didn't turn his arm my bad what i'm saying is that at the time when the deal did not materialize he told the story of that when he visited he visited with his family and he was speaking in french and he mentioned chelsea so liverpool did not progress the actual deal or follow up on the actual deal because we assumed he was going to go to chelsea and the story as i know it what he had stated back in the day was that when he mentioned the name chelsea it was his sister whose name is chelsea that's what he was referring to so i don't know maybe he had said that to try to cover himself or he was lying or maybe, I don't know, maybe now he's telling the truth or maybe he's lying now and maybe it's just all trying to show face and whatever, I don't know. That's the story that I always knew that when he visited, it was all to do with that French misunderstanding with Michael Edwards and he spoke French and Michael Edwards obviously doesn't speak French as far as I'm aware of. Um, and when he mentioned the name Chelsea, we assumed from a local point of view that he's going to go to Chelsea Football Club, which was not the case based on the information that he had stated. So, whatever. However, after a slow start toward the new season, largely due to injuries, the Reds are prepared to set the sights on a Kamala Dean Sulemana. Uh, the a summer arrival from Norseland, the Ghanaian, International has been much of he has been much more influential in terms of productivity in the last 14 matches so far. The 19-year-old has already surpassed Doku's tally in three goals in 44 competitive outings for Rennes, having netted four times whilst also bagging two assists. This is Kamal Din Suleiman, by the way. So he has uh, played 20 times in all competitions, in 14 times in league on conference league, five times, one in the UEFA. Uh, Europa Champions League qualifiers, he played once. He has scored five times in all competitions, four times in the league, one in the Conference League, and then two two assists, uh, both in League on. So he's already at like seven compared to the three of Jeremy Doku. So having netted four times and also back in two assists, the Reds, uh, though, are set to face stiff competition from other uh, top clubs across Europe in the pursuit of Solomana. By the way, he was also closely... Uh, he was. I just remembered he was also close to joining Ajax. If you remember, it was all like as if the deal was done from Norseland. He was going to go to Ajax. United were looking at him, and United were only looking at him from the point of view that he was the backup to the Jaden Sancho. Even though there was some certain media outlets, maybe the agent of Usmane Dembele trying to rerun what they had done in the summer 2020 of Usmane Dembele being the fall guy or the alternative to a Jaden Sancho if they missed on him. Because if you remember the whole summer 2020 debacle of 120 million euros 108 million pounds and they were going to hold out and they set a deadline and the deadline came and deadline passing night fans were like seven this seven that he's gonna get the nervous action <laughs> never got it. they never got it but then the funny somewhere of where uh, they ended up becoming around 75 million pounds or some shit like that they ended up getting him but the whole kamala dean solomano was there and all you're gonna get him and you know his links and this and that kind of shit and then there was a talk of him going to ix and he was he was traveled there and it was a done deal and then bam quick you know it was like a huge turn of events nope he's gonna go to france and he went to uh, ren so that one i forgot about but i did remember as i was reading it so who uh, who was a close link with the move to manchester night in the summer as for jeremy doku he has uh, he has no shortage a shortage of uh, suitors despite Liverpool opting to look elsewhere recent reports suggest that the belgium is being monitored by european giants such as by barcelona and by munich who may consider him as a direct replacement for kingsley coleman next season however the 19 year old winger certainly needs to work on his producti productivity if he is to make waves across a uh, european football especially at a high level so his future may actually depend on how he performs during the remainder of the campaign so if liverpool football club go for kamala dean solomana i said it before i'll say it again we will have one hell of a player for me when i look at him and Jaden sancho who attribute wise they're very similar when we talk about skills trickery all that kind of stuff this guy with the setup that we have with the manager we have will easily outperform Jadon Sancho. Easily outperform him, hands down. But the question is, is he going to come in and is he going to be an individual that's going to play limited games at Liverpool or is he going to come in and play regular football? That's the question. With the whole Sadio Mane contract situation where we're supposedly willing to offer him a new contract extension in the summer, you know, there's all these type of questions that go on in my head of, are we looking to actually, okay, Mane's out and this guy comes in, are we making that change? because when you look at FSG, we know the resources that they're not pumping into the actual football club. There's limited resources. Then you look at it from another point of view, which is 
probably this is an interesting one. If FSU are not willing to spend, it gives Klopp an excuse, well, I'm working on a, a, a limited budget. Then you go back to December 2019, which I don't really like looking at it from this point of view or thinking about this. When Klopp talked about the next cycle, signing a two-year contract extension from 22 to 24, uh, the, you know, the future of the club, living in a good position, the next cycle, all that kind of crap. Because Klopp knows he's not going to get resources to build that next cycle, is he just like trying to keep together what he has built? Is he trying to keep to together what he has built because he knows he's not going to get the resources? So by keeping together what he's got, it means that the players are going to keep getting older. And by the time Klopp leaves in 24, it's game over. Meaning that we are right back in the Manchester United situation of when Fergie left with an aging team and then the next man's got to come in and pick up everything because FSG are not investing. There's that possibility as well, which I've been thinking about. But we know that right now at Liverpool Football Club is basically Arsenal, Arsene Wenger 2.0. Literally, our owners are hiding behind Klopp because of what Klopp is doing. And they're not giving him the resources. Look at what Wenger was doing with the likes of Gil Clichy and, you know, whoever else they actually had. And Bentner and whatnot. Remember to click on the like button below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new people. Let's go to the next report, which is by Real Liverpool FC. It states in the actual title, Liverpool manager Jürgen Klopp now prefers Kamala Dean Sulemana. Liverpool manager Jürgen Klopp reportedly now prefers the idea of signing Renz winger Kamaladin Solomana as a supposed opposed to teammate Jeremy Doku. The Reds have uh, since uh, been linked with a move for the Belgian winger Doku and the move has been had been expected to materialise in the future. One note to remember is, again, if we go back to the Usmane Dembele, we go to the Kingsley Coleman and Kamaladin Solomana, I always go with Kamaladin Solomana. If we also add a different name into the mix and add a fourth name, Unless uh, Arnold Danjuma, I always go with Kamala Dean Sulemana. Kamala Dean Sulemana is far superior than all of those wingers. All of them. Ability-wise, Usmane Dembele is ahead. And ability-wise, Usmane Dembele, if he stays fit, he matures, he you know develops the way he should, he's a world-beater. Literally, he's a world-beater. But he can't get his shit together. He's just got off-field problems and because he's not applying himself correctly. He's always injured and all that kind of shit. Maybe he just hit the high life and he just wanted to let the door roll in. Maybe he just doesn't have that it factor. I don't know what it is. But when I look at Kamala Dean Sulemana, he is literally a world-class superstar in the making. So that's what I think of him. I really do believe that if we sign this guy, my dear God, <laughs> my dear God. So anyway, however, Klopp uh, could be now be set to turn attentions to 19-year-old Solomana as uh, the German Bosch attempts to bolster the squad at Anfield. What I, the point I was make, gonna make before I made a different point is that Fabrizio Romano has been stating that Liverpool Football Club's priority for the January transfer window and of course the summer is wingers. That's what he's been saying, wingers. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? We don't need a winger, we need a midfielder <laughs> because our defensive transitions are shy. And we have been looking a little bit better in over the last couple of games, but that's partly to do with the fact that Thiago's come in and Thiago's not good when it comes to defensive transitions because he's not a defensive midfielder. But what he's good at is in possession, giving us stability with the patterns of play. That's what he has offered us. So when we're in possession, sometimes when these turnovers over happen, it's because we don't know what to do with the ball and we're always recycling it. And then we're trying to take too much time on the ball or we're risking things and then we lose the ball or because we don't have the option. Thiago's come in and he slipped in and he's giving those patterns of the play. So it makes a lot of logical sense that we are looking so much more better, but don't become complacent. We still have an issue. It's like the whole playmaker situation. Phil Coutinho leaves, we didn't replace him. It still exists. The, that creative aspect still exists. Should we go for Pedro Gongaves or should we go for Dominic Sobosla? I prefer Dominic Sobosla because of what we can develop him to be. Because he is a natural world beater for sure, 100%. If he goes to Manchester City, Pep Guardiola turns him into De Bruyne like that. Like that. If he comes to Liverpool Football Club, he can be De Bruyne for Liverpool Football Club. Go back 2015, I did tweet John W. Henry the prick. Go sign Kevin De Bruyne. Wolfsburg, 50 million, worth it. Leading assist player in all of Europe. Didn't listen. And he's a local fan, especially as a kid. Don't know about now. So, however, Klopp could set to turn his attention to 19 year old Solomon. That's according to a report from Spanish outlet for Chages. This isn't the first time the club has been linked with a Ghanaian a teenager as uh, FC Northland manager Fleming Pedersen previously confirmed interest from Merseyside. Kamaladin Solomon, Liverpool now in contention for extraordinary forward. Face Manchester United competition that was by sport winners way back in May 2021, which of course I would have talked about in LFC transfer talk. Described as extraordinary by Pedersen, 
the seven time I don't know, it's not Martin Cap Anderson. The seven time Cab to Ghana is moved from a Danish top fly league on for 12.6 million in the summer. That's according to Goal, which is also on transfer market. What do they have? 12.6 million there, so fee 13.5 million is the actual fee or the totality maybe rising with add-ons and all that kind of stuff however what i will certainly state what i will certainly state which is an important point to make which i completely forgot <laughs> i completely forgot what i was about to say there to a point i forgot what i was going to say it'll come back to me so for the season solo man has got five and provided two assists in 20 places across all competitions. A real Liverpool verdict this day is uh, valued at 13.5 million under contract until 2026 in France. Uh, that's quite in transfer market. Prized, uh, pricing the starlet away from Rennes so soon after arriving would most likely be a difficult task. I don't believe so, but we'll see what happens. Predominantly a left winger with capabilities of playing across the front line. Solomano would represent the ideal option to bolster the attack at Liverpool. We will discuss that shortly in terms of who to ditch. What would happen in that front line? I need to bring up this actual thing real quickly. Because there's a couple of other bits and bobs that are going on right now as well in regards to, you know, a couple of def our defenders who have been linked with the move away, which is kind of fascinating. So, I read that the boasting, a strong finishing and dribbling skills. The initial report claims uh, Klopp is an admirer of the teenager's uh, pressing intensity. One major downside to a move uh, in for Solomon in January. However, however, it is the Ghana's involvement in the African Cup of Nations, meaning there will be a no instant replacement for Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah. Well, again, we look at that because I have said this previously before. We have solutions. We have solutions 100%, but we can certainly take a look at that. Uh, next report, and by the way, remember to click on the like button below, subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you're just watching and you're not liking, let's hit some likes. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hopefully the stream is a little bit better. I made a little bit adjustments a little bit earlier on. Hopefully I can keep working on this. Uh, next report, which is by Football365, it states in the actual headline, Liverpool, I, Renz, a star, Barca, won Martial. Okay. Uh, Barca linked with a trio and Barca with the January budget of £42.70. It continued to be linked with some big names. That's a bit of a piss take. And reports over the weekend suggest the deal to sign Ferran Torres for Manchester City was in the pipeline. Mundo Deportivo reckons, uh, reckons it was up for discussion with Pap Guardiola met a Barca director Amatio uh, Almeni for uh, dinner and another individual which I tweeted out by the way last night. Uh, Barca also said to be in the race to sign Babuka uh, Kamara from Marseille which I did tweet out. Fumacato uh, Fum said the Catalans will take on by Munich in the race for the defensive midfielder signature while AC Milan are also among the interested parties uh, after Kamara rejected another contract at Olympic Marseille. Uh, there are there is Marsh, uh, Anthony Marshall, the France force seems to be set to leave Manchester United and Mundo Deputy uh, Tivo names Abasa as a one of his suitors. I think he'll go to Inter or he'll go maybe Italy, I don't know. Uh, Dembele determined to become a free agent. Barca will be, uh, will, will need to replace, we need a replacement for Usman Dembele, it would appear. The France attacker is, and by the way, like I said, this Kamal Adin Solomana do not rule out Barcelona. If Usman Dembele is taking the piss, like Kamal Adin Suleiman is a phenomenal, phenomenal like for like replacement. Phenomenal. Uh, when we talk about attributes wise, the France attacker is out of contract at the end of the season, and Sport said that he's rejected the best and final offer uh, Barca have uh, to make. Newcastle continue to be linked with Dembele, who's aware of a more lucrative offers outside of Spain. We are not interested in Pogba. This, all this, I basically tweeted out yesterday. Paul, Paul Pogba is another Frenchman, a poetry fee agency, and appears very little a prospect for renewing a renewal at Manchester United in the meantime. But Mina Real is struggling to tempt Real Madrid. Marcus and Real are no longer interested in Pogba, with the club exploring other options. Modric eyes Manchester City move. This was a very interesting one. Real, and when I was reading this last night, and I'm like, yo, and I sat there tweeting this shit out, I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Real are said to lose. Uh, a midfield in their own free agency in the summer. Luka Modric approaching the end of his deal at the burn above. Florentino Perez and Carlo Ancelotti are said to uh, be keen to keep the 36 year old. But Modric wants a contract for longer than 12 months, uh, for which he may have to go elsewhere. A uh, super deported reports that Modric does fancy new doesn't fancy Newcastle or Spurs. 
but he will be keen to pay a player for Guardiola at Manchester City uh, with the prospect of moving on to City's sister club uh, in New York, which will be New York City, also appealing to the former Ballon d'Or winner. Yeah, because I've seen a couple of years ago there was reports of him wanting to move to uh, MLS or move to America. Liverpool move on from Doku. Liverpool have been linked with Renz attacker Jeremy Doku, but uh, for changes, reckons the Reds' interest was just a phase. Now, yeah, well, we go through these phases, so there's no surprise there. Now, apparently, Jurgen Klopp prefers Ren uh, Doku's. Uh, Rens teammate Kamala Dean Sulamana. Uh, Frachedja said the Reds are keen to take the 19 year old pressing, 19 year old's pressing style and the fact that he would be cheaper than Doku. For me, Doku would be 30 million for sure because of the Euros and the attachments to that. Getting Kamala Dean Sulamana would be sensational. He is what, like, Manchester United talking about Jada Sancho, this is a cheaper, better alternative. Hands down. Hands down. The only downside is. The whole African nations, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. Don't attack me like you did to Klopp. <laughs> African brothers and sisters. All I'm saying is, African nations is a problem. Of course, we lose, but this is where you have to build the squad to the point of where when you get into that position, you have the depth, so you have the resources, so that when that month comes, it's not too much of a, a burden on the actual squad. So, yeah, if we are genuinely going for Kamal Adin Sulaimana. Is January a possibility? Probably not. Is it in the summer? Maybe so. Can Edwards or even Julian Ward, also known as intern, you know, with Olivia Twist, Oliver Twist, excuse me, put a deal together where we get like our first buy the cherry like they did with Nabi Keta in the summer 2017? Pimp Nabi Keta, by the way. Who knows? Alright. Next, uh, there is no reports remaining, by the way, but what I will send you today is there is a couple of other pieces of business that is. Where's my Twitter? So, here we go. There is... Don't care about that one. We don't care about that one. We don't care about that one. So, Lupula reportedly willing to let defender Neko Williams leave in the winter transfer window. After he's decided he wants to leave, the Reds have set a £10 million price tag, which works out as 11.7 million euros. The price tag for a backup for the back of right back, that's according to the mirror. And then recently there was a report that come out which had basically stated West Ham have identified, which I misspelled that and I can't fucking hit when I misspell shit. Have identified Liverpool defender Nat Phillips as the ideal replacement for injured defender Angelo Agbonner. So and that's by football insider. It looks like uh West Ham are looking at Nat Phillips. So potentially if we sell Nat Phillips that could be twenty million plus another ten million for Neko Williams. And there's Joe Gomez being linked with the move to Aston Villa. Now, in my personal opinion, if Stevie G is looking... And the, the actual Joe Gomez is actually a loan deal. Now, if we do let Joe Gomez go on loan, then Nat Phillips ain't going anywhere. That's just the way you have to look at it. Because we would only have Van Dijk, Kanate, Grandpa Mate, and Joe Gomez. Well, Nat Phillips, either one or the other. So it's by having four or five, like, well, what, what are we going to do? Because if we have now started to think to ourselves, well, because of the l lack of cover last season, because we ended up selling Klamy Madmalofen and we didn't bring a, a defender in, we're overcompensating now. But now maybe it's got to a point where, look, we're back, we don't need to. You know, maybe something will happen during the season where they'll be like backfire on us. But this is what it appears like we are making these sort of decisions of where we decided to move on from that whole disaster of the defensive decision making and selling and not having the the right type of cover like last season so it looks to me like as if we moved on from it so we'll probably make a decision in january now the whole neko williams situation i would rather the local football club for me personally go get naughty mccullough because of his ability to play in multiple various positions and do it really really well because we have been linked with Gleason Bremer from Torino for like thirteen million pounds. Well, actually, it's not. Well, it's not exactly thirteen million pounds. It's like from eight million all the way to twenty-one million, which varies in in euros, whichever, it, whatever the hell it is. In my personal opinion, in January we need a midfielder. If we can go spend that forty million and go get the brother that one, Aurel and Tukimani, he comes in, he bosses that midfield. We can't let Alex Oxford Chamberlain go and he can go to Arsenal. He can go. I'm I'm done with it. I don't really care about that. So let me write these numbers down. And let, let's let's write this down as well. Oh bollocks, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> this is 
So let's look at let's look at the ins. Let's go for two uh, many. So two too many, and let's go with mukilele. So we bring in. We bring in a right midfielder, a right, we bring in a, a DM, or defensive-minded midfielder like a Tukemeni, and we bring in Mukalele, because he's a right-back, but he has ability to play right centre-back, left centre-back, as well as right midfield. So we bring in those two. So those are the ins, and the outs would be Alex Oxford chamberlain let's say we get rid of Phillips, and Neko Williams. So if we get rid of Neko Williams and we get rid of Nat Phillips, those are two homegrown players. Ox is a homegrown player as well. But we bring in a Relin Tukumeni. And if we bring in a Relin Tukumeni, we would have Fabinho, Thiago, Nabi Keita, a Relin Tukumeni. That would be four non-homegrown midfielders. The other side, we would have Henderson, Curtis Jones, Bourne James Miller, and we would have Harvey Elliott. So that would be four and four. And we would also have a ninth midfielder, which would be no, Nordi Mukalele. But how does all this fit in? So, Alisson, Kelleher, two goalkeepers, Van Dijk, Matip, Kanate, Robertson, Timikas, that would be five. We would have to sell Matip in the summer. We have to sell him. If we bring in Nordi Mukalele in January, we have to sell Matip. Because as of right now, we've only got 16 players registered. So, we have Alisson, Kelleher, Matip, uh, Van Dijk, Matip. So we have two goalkeepers, five defenders, Van Dijk, Matip, Kanate, Robertson, Timikas. That's seven. Then we have Fabinho, Thiago, and Nabiketa. That's what, ten. And then we have six forwards. We have Firmino, Mane, Salah, Jota, Origi, and Minimino. So we have 16 players registered. To bring in Arel and Tukumeni, that would be 17. So we'd have to sell another one in January, which I believe is going to be Rigi, even though there's reports that we're not going to look to sell Rigi because we need him because of African nations. But if we are able to bring in an individual like, for example, um, Moussa Diaby, who's French, but he's got an African sort of connection, if we bring him in, that'd be fantastic. Now, that's the other thing as well, I forgot. Do I pick Musa Diaby over <laughs> Kamala Din Sonomana? I, I, I sit on the fence and that's when I'd be like, I want both of them. <laughs> I really would love both of them. If I really had to pick and I had to go into my head, if I'm picking for now, see, I'm, I'm copying out. If I'm picking for now, it's Musa Diaby. If I'm picking for the future, it's Kamala Din Sonomana. But if I don't cop out and I say, who do I want right now? It'd have to be Musa Diaby because of the now. But Kamal Adin Sulaiman is a ma he's a nasty man. <laughs> he's nasty, bro. Uh, anyway, so by having the sixteen, we would have to get rid of an Arigi or a Minimino in January, which most likely we would get rid of Arigi, and that way we would have fifteen on homegrown players to be able to bring in a Relin Tukumeni as well as Nordi Makalele. And to me personally, that's what we realistically need. That's all we need. That way we could get rid of Neko Williams. You can get rid of Alex Oxley Chamberlain, and we can get rid of. Neko Williams, right? I, I, Alex Oxford, Chamberlain, Neko Williams, and Nat Phillips. We can get rid of all three of those brothers. Bye, gone. See you later. I would rather keep on Nat, uh, Nat Phillips and get rid of Gomez if Gomez wants to go. That's what I would prefer to do if he's a little bit restless. And there's a, this, I've seen a little bit brief of this report that the reason why he wants to leave is because of the World Cup upcoming in 22, in around November, December time, Qatar. So he wants to be in contention for that. So this is why he wants to go on loan, play regular minutes and so forth. This is with the whole loan deal with Aston Villa and maybe Stevie G trying to prize him away and whatnot and all that kind of shit. Um, if we do that, then we got to say, look, Let's go get that uh, Chukweme dude. Let's get him, but loan him back and let Gerard develop him for like two years. Do a deal or some that that kind of stuff. So then, in two three years time, when Gerard comes, like he brings him with him or whatever. I don't know, but if we look at the whole structure of and again, I make adjustments as I go along. I, although, be it, I, I've been talking about when Musa Diaby, Mane goes and. Alexander Isaac comes in in the summer 22 and Firmino goes and this and that kind of shit. I've been talking all about this for the last number of months now. We bang on about it non-stop. But if you look at it from the perspective of if we're going to try filling Kamala Dean Suleiman on, you know, where is that defensive-minded midfielder going to fit in? For me personally, ideally, the best case scenario would be the four and the four in the midfield. When we look at the four homegrown and four non-homegrown. Four non-homegrown would be Fabinho, Thiago. If we keep all on Nabi Keita, 
and then bring in a Ren Tukumeni. The Renato Sanchez I'm fully aware of is gone. That deal is off the table, meaning that I don't believe we will sign him. Them are the four that we should be going. I did see a report, by the way, just on a side note, a little bit earlier on that I suggested that is going to go to Barcelona. <laughs> Whatever. So if them are the four that we go that we would have in our midfield, if Fabinho, Thiago, Naby Keir and Aren Tukumeni, we're done. Then the other side, this is where it gets interesting with the Henderson. We could go for Bellingham. We could go for Chukwueme. We could have Curtis Jones, which, as far as I'm concerned, Curtis Jones' time is a little bit limited at Liverpool Football Club, even though I know a lot of local fans like him, but he's not developing as quick as he should, and they will chop him and get him out of the actual squad as quick as possible. And then the fourth one, it could be Calvin Phillips. It could be someone else, you know, who, whoever it would be. I don't know who we would be looking at. Uh, and then when we look at the actual attack, Alexander Isaac is one. Sadio Mane is supposedly we're going to give him another contract extension. That would be crazy to me. I mean, I love the gangster and Sadio Mane, but we've got to make the right decision. If we keep him, then we would have Salah. Then we would have Jota. I want us to get a Pedro Goncalves or a Sabozla, which could be an Emi Guri. I don't really care who the hell we get. Uh, it could be Kamal Abdin Solomana. That would be fine by me. Then we would have five forwards. So we'd have Isaac. We would have, let's say... Uh, Mane, Salah, Jota, we could have Kamal Adin Suleiman and that would be five forwards but then we would have a sixth one available because if we go four and four in midfield then we would have eight midfielders and we would have the option for an extra one which means that we could go still for a suppose like or Pedro Concalves. It depends on which direction we want to go in. So I really don't know if Gomez if we sell Phillips so then when we look at the other side of it so if we go on the non-homegrown 17, Alisson Kelleher, two goalkeepers. Van Dijk, Matip needs to go. This is where Nordi Mukulele falls in, where we get rid of Matip and M Mukulele will be there. Kanate, Robertson, Timikas. We will have Gomez, we have Phillips and we have Trent. But let's assume we get rid of Gomez in January. He wants to go out alone, but let's say we get rid of him a permanent. So we'd have Van Dijk, we would have Kanate, we would have Phillips and... We would have well, Van Dijk, Kanate. We would have Nat Phillips. Van Dijk, Kanate. Nat Phillips. And we would have to have. How the hell that would that? Van Dijk, Kanate. Well, my tip is going to have to stay in. <laughs> that got to work out. One, two, three, four. So why am I getting this wrong for a two and a three? Van Dijk, Kanate, Gomez, and Phillips. Well, we've got four. We realistically should be keeping both of those. Mm. I have to figure this out because this is kind of throwing me a little bit sideways. Van Dijk, Kanate, we could be replacing Matip with Gleeson Bremer. That could be a that could be a, a situation whereby they're shuffling it. Where if they have Van Dijk, Gleeson Bremer, Kanate, and then that's uh, Gomez, and that would be four. And they've decided that Nat Phillips is going to get sold, and then. That not that homegrown slot that Phillips will be taking, they're looking to fill it in with another player, not for the defense, but like for the midfield or the actual attack. That could be a point. That's what I was trying to get to. But what I was looking at it from the perspective was is Van Dijk, Kanate, we've got Gomez and we got Phillips. If let's say for example we let go of Phillips, uh, Gomez, let's say for uh, let's say we sell Phillips. Having Mate, get rid of Matip and bring in Nordi Makalele would be way better because we'd have Van Dijk, we would have Kanate, we would have, let's say, Gomez. That would be three centre-backs and we would have Nordi Makalele, who's a right-back, but has the ability to play there. Then we would have four, but you realistically want to have four, four centre-backs. But if you have that three and you have the extra one, it makes it a little bit interesting, I guess. I have to think about the defence. I have to figure the defence one out. But the midfield and then the attack, it's all about the four and four. If the mid, if the in defense we have five and three, and in midfield we have five and three, then in attack we have to go five and it would be five and three. I think it would be well, not five and three. It would be five, five, ten, fifteen, and two. So if you go five in midfield, five in defense, five in attack, then two goalkeepers, then it would be eight homegrown. We would have minimum of we can exceed that number. It's just a minimum of eight. So it all depends on how we figure it all out. Honestly, I don't really know the answer to this. I have to think about this. Kamal Adin Solomano one that's thrown things because for me, more higher priority in January is a midfield, a midfielder. That's what we really, really need. Anyway, people, it comes to the end of the show. 
I'm going to get out of here. I will see whether I will do another LFC transfer talk a little bit later on. Everyone knows me and my <laughs> late night shows. I'm not really the biggest fan of doing it because I enjoy, I uh, like enjoying my evenings. But follow me on Twitter. I think LFC TV. I do tweet out a lot. You always get the. I, I won't say everything off the press, but you know you get a lot of the actual rumor mills quite quickly. Uh, so I. Spirit Shankly and the crossbow of historic agreement with Liverpool FC. Oh boy. Oh boy, this could be an LFC news. This is on, this is Anfield. Spirit Shankly on the cusp of a historic agreement with Liverpool FC. Imagine the scenes just weeks after the collapse of the, I don't need to know, the Liverpool uh, Supporters Union is on the verge of finalising a legal, legally binding agreement with Liverpool FC. The relationship we have before all this had been good. A lot explains to this is Anfield. We've we'd been having talks and engaging with the club on various issues in the weeks before they announced that they would be joining the European Super League. So the news came as a huge surprise. We felt there you go, but that's what they did. They stabbed you in the back again. I will reference Jordan Henderson. Do you remember the whole Fulham? We're going to give him to Fulham and we're going to get Clem Dempsey because our owners are not willing to pay the extra four million to get Clem Dempsey where the price tag was seven million. Jordan Henderson joined Liverpool Football Club from Sunderland for like what was it, twenty five or fifteen million? And then they were like, no, we're going to throw him uh, to the, we're going to throw him under the bus. And then if you look at the summer twenty one transfer with the whole soul against, they were willing to throw him under the bus again. I said I'm fifty fifty because we keep all the players for far too long. We should be moving them on. And there should be an understanding in the fan base like it's time to get rid because there's a there's a good transfer system. But because we don't have a very good transfer policy, it's just a matter of we have to keep the players. And I said before, it's either because Klopp doesn't want those, wants to build... Because does Klopp have the energy to build the next cycle? Think about it. We're in a position where we're winning and successful and all that kind of shit. We're competing. Does Klopp have the... Energy, knowing what the first three years were like at Liverpool Football Club, to go through that process again. Sometimes change is difficult. So there's that aspect to it as well. We felt that there was a number of opportunities for them to discuss with us. If they had, we would have told them that it was a huge mistake and the sports would never support the idea. Well, there you go. But like I said, the John Henderson one is a perfect prime example of what these scumbag owners are all about. They were willing to throw him under the bus back in the day when he had just joined the football club. And then they were willing to do it when... He's a club captain and he adds value and all that kind of shit. He's a leader and, oh, Jordan's a great captain. Like, think about it. <laughs> if they're willing to do that in front of your face, that it just shows you what they're like. Uh, we view the club uh, as uh, belonging to the fans and the community. We need to. We needed a way to ensure that the club had a legal obligation to consult and seek consent on issues that directly affect the future uh, of the club impact on supporters and the community. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, Supporters board. Uh, I don't really want to go through this. You can read it. It's on. This is unfair. I'll tweet it out in a second or two. As far as I'm concerned, when I realistic look at it, I I agree with I agree with a lot of the. What I don't agree with is what happened and how it went down. The ESL and then the fans saying, "Well, we got to see at the table." What I'm saying is that we had them by the cojones. We had them by the cojones. This is where they like look at the hostage video, the hostage apology video by John W. Henry. Do you really think that that fucker meant it? No, he didn't. He didn't mean that. He just thought to himself, I got to get this out there. Like, for example, you know, when you do someone wrong, either you don't want to discuss it because it becomes a little bit of a, a difficult situation. Like, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. So he wanted to get the own comfort out of the way because has he showed up to Liverpool ever since the whole ESL? No, he's over in Boston talking a lot of shit about not going to fall for the, trans, for the fans uh, transfer lust on social media. Talking shit over there like a big man. That's what he's doing. And then he dips in and now with social media posts when we win and we lose just to remind people, oh yeah, I, I'm a supporter of Liverpool, like I'm the owner kind of thing. That's what he does. He didn't give a shit about Liverpool Football Club. This was a way when we had them, their backs up against the wall. This is where we should have demanded shit. What they feared, the, the whole 51% rule. They feared that. But for Liverpool fans to be like, well, we're going to see you at the table. Now we can do shit. Or we agree to what they want. So they agree to their rules. And now we've, now we've got to see at the table, which is the, the, the most limited what they wanted. It was the least they were willing to give. And you took it. That's what I'm trying to say. The least they were willing to give, Liverpool fans took it. I was not happy with it. And I'm still not happy with it. 
But anyway, that's the latest on that one. We'll see whether that one LFC news somewhere in the future. But anyway, I'm out of here. So that wraps up LFC Transfer Talk. Click on the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and thanks very much for watching.